encouraged by deliberate civic education that stresses the notion of service to a higher cause than oneself. As some have occasionally urged, a major step in that direction would be the adoption of an obligatory period of national service for every young adult, perhaps involving a variety of congressionally approved domestic foreign good works. Now, of course, Obama has been talking about exactly that. And this is a key phrase here in terms of Obama. It stresses the notion of service to a higher cause than oneself. This is one of, going to be one of the great ways that Obama sells the tyranny. He's going to sell it as people coming together, as, as serving a higher cause. Uh, and, and again and again, you hear him, not him, just him, but his wife as well in, in some of her speeches, talk about the fact that America, he's going to have to uh, sacrifice to bring about this change. And, and one of the key sacrifices, without any question, is going to be sacrificing their uh, uh, sovereignty and ability to govern themselves. And that's uh, why, that's why uh, Colin Powell and uh, Vice President, President Biden-elect are all saying, get ready for things that are unpopular when speaking to inner core groups of Democrats around the country, and it's been caught on a few times. They're yeah. saying the people aren't going to like any of this, and that's raiding the pension funds, starting new wars. And th th there's also this classic mind control, and I want you to speak to this particular tactic. They'll announce, we want world government, world government's good, new world order's good, new world order means world government. Then they'll say, but I didn't just say that, and you're insane if you're against world government, and if you believe in world government, it exists, and if you think it's going to exist, but if you don't want world government, you're insane, it doesn't exist, and then we've seen, again, all these publications announcing world government uh, in our face, uh, it's the same thing with Obama, there's just this, this, almost like they're testing being ridiculous, lying in public, doing asinine things, and studying re-education camps in in soviet russia and and, and uh, communist china uh that's what they did they made the interrogations crazy they 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 made people change what they were saying believing every day they would say i'll quit torturing you and you say you agree with this okay i agree they still go ahead and torture you now you have to say you believe in that and it goes back to o'brien in 1984 where of course eric blair george arwell was writing about being a former secret police member uh, in India and then a propagandist at BBC at this mind control program of setting the precedence that the police can shoot somebody unarmed, uh, restrained in the back, and then nobody gets in trouble. Setting the precedence just for unbelievable corruption. Yeah, w w one of the things that they're always doing is, is, is pushing things as far as they can, and, and they're looking for a public reaction. Um, if they don't get... Uh, uh, the, the, the public uh, reaction against them that, uh, that, that is a problem to them, then they'll go ahead with whatever they've announced. If they get a massive public reaction, then they'll just start denying it and saying it's ridiculous, and these people who are saying it are, are, are crazy, and, and they'll realize that they're, they're going to have to do it in, in another way, maybe in two steps rather than one step. Case so that, in point, case in point. First, they said there was no Trans-Texas Corridor on CNN and Fox. They said Ron Paul was insane, uh, that it didn't exist. On and on and on and on. Uh, then they put up the signs, put up a lot of the toll roads, many of the 1,000 miles of toll roads. About 10% were put in place. Then they came this week and said, okay, the Trans-Texas Corridor is dead. And then they announced a few days later, well, really, it's not dead. We're just breaking all the projects down into sub-pieces, and we're going to... Uh, carry out every single bit of seizing your infrastructure to put international toll roads on it. So so there's the example right there. Meanwhile, I'm on national radio debates, and the talk show host laughs at me and says none of this even exists. Yeah, that, that's the way they work. And, you know, in, in, in terms of um, um, Obama, we've, we've got a, a, a mass mind control operation behind him that's uh, far more, well, if you, it's not sophisticated if you know how it works, but if you don't, it's far more sophisticated than, uh, than, I, than I've come across. This is, this is really a, a, a step up. Well, you said it. They're using every science they've developed together, overlaid, working on all eight cylinders like I've never seen. And normally they would play off the left-right paradigm time uh, with both parties for the illusion of that the Congress and the president really run things and aren't just front puppets, uh, you know, for the real guys upstairs, as you've said so many times, for the first time ever, they're telling us we must be unified. And for me, that is the signal that they are really moving into a new phase. Well, it was interesting. Years and years ago, um, uh, when I was uh, researching this back in the um, early 90s, um, I came across um, a, a lady called Kitty Little, who was an Oxford Don. 
and she told me that she attended a, um, a, a, a talk by someone at Oxford University um, in the, like the 1940s. And um, she got into this meeting, which was a closed meeting, um, because they thought she had certain political views, and she didn't. And so she was an interloper, and they didn't know. And this man stood up, and he, he, he made the speech, and he said that there was uh, an organization that had no name. He said, we don't give it a name because it's much more difficult to track it down if it doesn't have a name. He said it has a political uh, wing, and it has what he called a biological wing. The head of the biological wing was uh, was uh, Lord Richter Rothschild. And he, he said, was the head of that time of the political wing. And he said, as a result, there was going to come a point where he was going to become prime minister of Britain. Um, and his name was Harold Wilson. And he became prime minister of Britain in the early 60s, and, and, and or, or, apart from four years, until 1975. But what he said in that uh, speech was that the infiltrators of this conspiracy we're going to go into the um, left wing, uh, sorry, the right wing of the Labour Party, which, is, which was perceived then as a left wing party, and they were going to go into the left wing of the Conservative Party, which was perceived as a right wing party, because he said people instinctively um, don't like extremists, so we're going to pose as moderates. He said, and what's going to happen? is um, from um, uh, control of both these parties, we're going to fuse them together to the point where they become one party under two names uh, or three names with the Liberal Party. And what has happened in this country from, from um, uh, the um, uh, end of Margaret Thatcher onwards, particularly when, when uh, Blair came in, is that is precisely what has happened. We have three parties in this country, uh, two that have any chance of forming a government, Labour and Conservative, the Liberal Democrats as well. You can't hardly, except in rhetoric, get a cigarette paper paper between them on, on most, most of these things. And the same is, is happening now in America. We're reaching this point where the parties are fusing um, into the one party that they want them to, to, to become. And so we don't have political choice anymore. Yes, whereas before, whereas before they would have little fights with each other over yeah. the power structure, over who got to sit in the seats and levers of power to 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 fund themselves and aggrandize themselves now there is no separation and remember last year david uh in england it came out that the house of commons was being spied on by mi5 all their right. phones were being listened to but that the main focus was a few little parties that weren't controlled and that they weren't worried about the three major parties because those were basically already run by the intelligence apparatus yeah, well, you've got Gordon Brown, the Prime Minister. You've got David Cameron, the leader of the opposition. Um, they, they use different words and they, they criticize each other. But you look at their basic policies and what they, what they would do in power. It's precisely the same. And so it shows how far along the road we've now come where even, uh, you know, the, 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 the pseudo fighting that went on before is, is now fusing into this, into this one party state. And what they've done with Obama is turning it, turned him into a, a public uh, demo Republican, if you like, a, a, a Republo Democrat, whatever you want to call it. They're putting him right in that center ground in the public mind of bringing people together. But actually, he is a, a, a massive extremist uh, who he, he ha owes more to the fascist state of mind, especially the people behind him, than any uh, socialist state of mind. Although if you go far enough left and far enough right, you meet the same situation anyway. And then we get into colors, using colors to program. Have you noticed that he and his wife, the night they won, both wore red and black and so did their children? Again, there's major messages in that. I mean, they understand um, the way that uh, vibrational codes affect people, and colors are vibrational codes. The different colors and different shades of colors. And that's the fascist color. Fields. And that's the yeah. fascist color: red, yeah. black, and white. And, and it affects you in a certain way, and they speak to the subconscious mind. But I think one of the key things that we're going to see with with Obama is um, the creation of a situation where. You, if you're not for him, then then you you somehow uh, uh, need to be marginalized. And you're I, causing you, the economy to get worse. They're already saying that. If, yeah. you do, if you do exactly what they say, and you don't question, and you go to the work brigade, and you hand your children over, and you spy on your neighbors, and you pay all these carbon taxes, things will be fixed. That's the solution. But if you stand in the way of the solution, you've got to be removed because it you know you're the you're the cause of the problem. 
I mean, w- when these when these uh, demigods and tyrannies come to power, I mean, Hitler's a classic example. Um, anyone uh, that is against them is attacked, is marginalised, is abused, is uh, 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 libelled and, and, and slandered, uh, and it's designed to stop 